Hi, my name's Ian and welcome to the channel. If you've not been here before and you have been here before, then welcome back. Well, it's that dreaded time of the year and it's time for Dick's MOT. So what we're going to be doing is some pre-MOT checks and all the things that I can personally check myself without getting under the vehicle and trying to shake things about, etc. But uh, it's uh, probably a useful thing for anybody who might be watching whose MOT is due. There's some very, very simple checks that you can do on your vehicle that avoids embarrassment or unnecessary costs when you go to the MOT station. So what we're going to be doing is going through those basic things, which basically includes lights, um, the tyres, the horn, etc. that type of thing. Basic stuff that you know most people will be able to fix if there is something not quite right with it. Are they saying that some vehicle manufacturers these days make it that impossible for you to change a headlamp bulb that you need to dislocate a finger and rip half your hand open to actually change one? But uh, thankfully on the on the Peugeot box that I've got here, same with the Ducato and the Citroen Relay, the headlamps are really easy to get out. So if you do need to change a bulb, it's a very simple task. And same with the rear lights, they come out very easily as well. But anyway, as I said, we're going to go through some checks and um, I'm going to use the remote control microphone, which I've got on here. And hopefully if I set the Osmo up behind the van, I'll be able to do the checks from there and talk from the dashboard at the same time. Uh, that's, that's the plan anyway. And then what I'll do is after I've done the rear of the van, I'm then gonna turn the van round and face it in the other way because the sun's very bright today. So I may not be able to see them in the camera, uh, the lights on the front, etc. So yeah, we'll crack into that and I'll speak to you later. Cheers. Hopefully the Osmo is picking me up. If we're not, we're in trouble. So basically what we're gonna do is turn the ignition just on, and then we're gonna put the rear lights on. So they should be coming on now. So I'll flick those on and off a few times just to double check that they're okay. We're then going to do the brake lights. Hopefully they're coming on and off now. Followed by that, we're then going to do the rear fog lamp. That should be coming on and off now. Then we're going to do the reversing lights. Hopefully they've come on now. Then we're going to do indicator left, indicator right. And then we're going to do hazard warning lights. And that should be the rear of the van completed. The only other one I need to do is the number plate lights. So we'll have a look at those in a minute. And that's our rear number plate lights functioning. The other thing I'm going to do as this model of van has got side markers on it as well, is I'm just going to go down these as well and just double check these are all working properly as well. Which is this side of the van, they are. And coming down the other side. Yep, all the side markers working. Right, I'm going to turn the van around now. Right, we're now ready to test the front of the vehicle. I've now got the engine running, so what I'm going to be doing, and the side lights should automatically come on uh, when I turn the engine on, so they should already be on. I'm going to turn the headlamps on. And then we're going to leave them on and we're going to check the high beam. So the high beam should come on now. Turn the headlamps off. We're then going to check the left indicator. Right indicator. And we're also going to check the hazard warning lights as well. And while we're at it, we're also now going to check the wash wipe. So basically when we pull the wash wipe button, the, the, the um, windscreen wipers should go backwards and forwards and we should get a spray on the windscreen as well, which we have. Right, that's the front checks now complete. The only other thing we need to do is just check the horn, which works.
The other visual inspection we're just going to carry out is making sure that the hazards work all the way around the vehicle. So this is the one, the driver's side mirror. That one's working. That one's working. Then driver's side mirror. That one's working. And that one's working. As well as a check we did on the wash wipe on the windscreen wipers, but we're also just going to check the actual rubber itself to make sure that's okay. I know these are because these have only been fitted about four months ago, something like that. I fitted these, so uh, there's plenty of life in those, but just make sure they're not flapping, falling to bits, uh, degrading, etc. Because again, they're quite an easy thing just to change. Well, the next visual check we're going to carry out is on the tyres. Now, I know that this tyre itself is getting towards the, le the legal limit, which if you look just there, you'll see there's a depth marker and it's just literally about a millimetre above that at the moment. When they hit these depth markers, if you can see there, that means the tyres need changing. But in reality, as it's getting towards the winter time now, you're probably best to, uh, if your tyres get into this point, it does need changing. Now, I have got plans to change the tyres on this van uh, quite soon. So that's the tyre depth on this particular tyre. The other thing we're going to look for is any visual signs of any cracking or anything like that on there again and I can't really see anything at all on there. The other thing uh, that's worth checking as well and I know the, what the dates are on these tyres but um, in reality you should tyres should be changed about every five years at the most um, because they can degrade. Now there is depth uh, there is a, a date on all tyres now it's down here on this one so basically this was the 26th week of 2017 is when the tyres were changed on this so that or when this tyre was manufactured more to the point so that means that this tyre is getting on for five and a half years old which in reality is getting to the point of it needs changing anyway but as I said it is getting quite low on the depth marker on there now so uh, as I said we are going to go for a full set of tyres on this shortly. So moving around to the front passenger side of the vehicle you can actually see on here there's actually just some slight degradation taking place in this tyre here, some, just a small crack in there. Uh, again it's nowhere near the depth marker like the other one was. I know the tracking is actually out on this vehicle as well so that's the other thing that's going to get done when it goes uh, for new tyres. But in reality uh, I know from previous experience that um, these tyres will probably pass an MOT. They might get an advisory on them but um, that will be it. And again this tyre, this, all four tyres in this vehicle were all manufactured at the same time, so they've all got the date, the same date stamp on them. Um, but as I said, I think the tracking's running out on the one on the uh, on the left. Oh, sorry, on the driver's side. Again, visual inspection of the actual side walls, they look fine. As I said, the rear tyres on this have got plenty of meat left on them. Um, I've had a puncture repair done on one of these, can't remember which one it was now. Um, but again, all four tyres are going to get changed on there anyway. But as I said, as a visual inspection again, just go around your sidewalls. Just make sure that there's uh, no sign of any cracking. And as I said, just check the, check the date again. As I said, on this one, we're looking at the 17th, uh, sorry, 26th week of 2017. So uh, again, they're getting to the point where they need changing anyway. Driver side rear again, that's got plenty of uh, meat left on it on the tread. Yeah, the side walls, they look fine. And as I said, same, the same dates on there, the 26th week of 17 on there as well. I'm pretty sure this is not part of the MOT, but the thing worth checking is your spare tyre as well. Just make sure that one's all right. I know this is actually a brand new tyre because I had it fitted when I, f well, yeah, when I first got the van. So uh, it's never been on the vehicle. In fact, this one might end up being going on that front driver's side just for now until I get the new tyres for it. So that's our basic visual spec inspection now completed. Um, if you're a bit more mechanically minded you may want to jack the vehicle up, get underneath it and start shaking things about to see whether there's any play in your, in your steering and uh, all that type of thing as well but um, I've not got the, the equipment to be able to do that at the moment um, so I'm just doing the visual inspections of the basic things that uh, the vehicle could uh, fail on. Um, 
I know from being underneath the vehicle, fitting all the water tanks, etc., there's no issue with any rust on the underside of this vehicle, so that's something I don't need to worry about at the moment. Okay, there could be some play in one of the bushes, might have a track roll on there and it's uh, you know, starting to, to wear a bit, might be somewhere in the steering rack. Uh, there could be all sorts of other things that could be going wrong, but I mean, there's nothing that I've noticed when I've been driving it to say that there's anything like that that could be wrong with it. So, uh, yeah, let's take it off the MOT and I'll come back to you later with the result of whether it's passed or not. Fingers crossed. So the question is, did Dick pass his MOT? Well, yes, the answer to that is yes, he did. Um, the only thing that the guy did say to me was that um, even though it did pass, that the handbrake could do with adjusting on there. He says it, it's, you know, it, it on the test, there was enough for it to uh, to pass the test, but he did say that it was getting towards the top end, so I need to do a bit of adjustment on that. And the other thing that he noticed as well was my headlamps were sticking a little bit too high, and actually while he had the bonnet up, he actually adjusted them for me for free, which was brilliant. So uh, thanks very much to, uh, to that guy for doing that for me. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be the end of this video. So uh, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers.